Hi friends, it's Jeanette Brossard again, or Miss B. Um, I was thinking all night about um, the two videos I've made so far, and even though it was simple graph paper and colored construction paper, I thought, well, in this uncertain time, maybe we need to be conservative with our materials and make them last a really long time. So I wanted to suggest to you this morning um, not to glue your pieces down to the black piece of paper. You can use those colored construction pieces of paper and make a design without gluing it. Take a picture with your phone or camera or your parents' phone, your grandparents' phone, and then you've got that picture forever. If you glue the materials down, then we can't use them over again. So if you have a limited amount of supplies, think about how you can make your design Take a picture of it so you can keep it forever, and then put those materials back into the Ziploc bag so you can use them again another day. Um, I also have some additional recycle and re -tips, reuse tips for you. Artists are masters at um, creative recycling and reuse, so I have some other objects that I just found around my house. Maybe you have some of them um, that you can use in this creative sort of mosaic making idea. Mosaics really can be made with any small items that by themselves might not be too exciting, but once you put them together in a new way to make a pattern or a picture, I think that's mosaic. Whether it's jelly beans, whether it's um, Lego bricks and blocks, or um, the materials that we've, I've already shown you how to use the construction paper. So let me sh pan down and I'll show you some extra ideas you can do. So one thing I was thinking about is if you don't have construction paper, then what? Well, if you have white paper and crayons or paint or uh, markers, you can make your own colored paper. And I'm just going to show you quickly with these crayons. You could color the whole page one color if you wanted. But I'm going to make a rainbow on my paper just using those old little nubs of crayons that no one likes to use, which is pretty much everybody has those around somewhere. Let's see. Green. And it's okay if the colors overlap a little bit. That gives you some variety. Blue. Oh, what else do I have? Maybe this is purple. Let's see. Oh, yeah, great. So even if you've got a white piece of paper, you can color it and then go ahead and make your strips, like what I was showing you in the last video, the construction paper video. And then cut those strips into pieces. And in fact, if you're cutting in between some of the colors, you might have some really great um, half blue, half green, different different shapes and combinations. It works just the same. So I th was thinking about that this morning. So you can make your own colored paper. In fact, you could make it swirly. You could make all kinds of varieties with just white paper. I used crayons, but you can use markers, paint, anything you want to create your own pieces. Um, here's that black piece of base paper I was talking about. And of course we can still continue to use this one piece of paper. What are some other things that we can use that I found around the house? Well, maybe some buttons. Does your parent or grown-up have a, bo a box of buttons? That might be something that you can use to make some designs with, some mosaic type designs. I like these brightly colored ones, but not all of us are going to have brightly colored ones in our containers. There's going to be buttons of different sizes, so think about how you can use those in different ways. This one's sparkly. Here's another sparkly one. So that might be another thing to investigate to see if you have buttons at home. Also, the thing I like about buttons is that they're, they're very tactile. Um, so if you have friends who need something a little more substantial rather than the thin slips of paper or if you have a visually impaired person who would like to do some creative projects um, the colors wouldn't necessarily matter so much but the size and the shape 
and the um, texture of the buttons is a good option. So that's one choice that I found around my house. Another choice I found around my house was caps. Um, some of you have been keeping and saving caps for projects at school. Um, so you may have a big container of them like I do. Some of your families might just be into recycling and these caps um, are one of the things that are challenging to recycle. So maybe you have some saved up from that and if not, it won't take you very long to save caps. It, it's surprising how quickly um, these plastic caps, once you start saving them, please wash them because you don't want any food residue on them. But pretty soon you might find that you've got Gatorade bottles, orange juice bottles, um, caps from different kinds of little tubes of things. Um, this one's a flip top. I think it was from a uh, mustard or something. Um, big lids. I'm pretty sure this was from cupcake frosting. And milk tops. Definitely milk tops. Let's see. This blue one was probably from milk. And you can see that very, very quickly you can get yourself a bunch of caps saved up. This already is looking like a big gigantic eyeball and since we made construction fish the other day this is reminding me of a of maybe a fish um, with colorful scales or um, lots of things. So these recycle caps and you can just keep them in a container or in a Ziploc bag and then you can use them over and over again to make different designs. Easy to get these saved up. I have two more things to share. One is rocks from my driveway. If you have nothing else or you just love being outside, which I love nature, I love being outside, I went right to my driveway and in my driveway I found a lot of different colors of rocks. Now the ones that I actually picked up were the ones that had a pretty nice um, color variation. If they're all gray, you can use that, but it's not going to give you quite as many choices as if you look for the ones that really pop out in your landscape. If there's ones that are really super white bright or really um, a different kind of rock that looks the same but different from some of the other choices, and then I found some that really were quite pink, and I just put them in a container, brought them in. They don't look very exciting brought them in the house and here I'm arranging them on my black piece of paper and look how great they look. So thinking about what you can find, what you can use, doing some experiments, that's all what we're about. If you've been able to go to the beach and picked up some shells, those are would also make some beautiful designs um, that you can add with your nature mosaic. Maybe, na maybe nature mosaics might have to be a whole category of what I do in another video. But again, accessing materials that you have at home or that you can find easily at home is what I wanted to talk to you about today. And again, just one more reminder, you don't have to glue them down. You don't have to glue them down. 